Hi, this is Dave from javacodejunkie.com and in today's video we're going to continue our exploration of the Java FX table view control. To be more specific, we're going to look at what steps we have to take in order to enable in-cell editing in the table view control itself. So stick around, we're going to get right into it. And just to recap our last video, and if you missed that, I encourage you to go back and have a look at it. It's uh, the table view part one. We learned that a table was composed of table columns. So we learned how to create three table columns, one for each of first name, last name, and age, and how to attach those to a table view. We also learned how to create a model for the table view. In our case, it was a person class that we used as the model with those three instance variables as well as getters and setters for each field. We're going to continue with table view in this episode and we're going to modify or add to the column definitions in order to allow us to do editing of the columns in the table cells. And this is what the table looked like. So we have the three columns, first name, last name, age, and we have various Looney Tunes character names and ages that we entered in directly into the table model itself, which then was reflected in the table view control. So let's get to the new modifications. So since a table view is initially read only by default, first thing we have to do is set the table to be editable. So we'll say table dot set editable true. Give ourselves some more room. And now for each of the columns we have to first provide a cell factory. Now a cell factory for a column is responsible for rendering the data in each cell in a column. So we're going to add one of those to each of our three columns. So start with the first name column. We'll set cell factory. Now the cell factory that we're going to use for a string field is called a text field table cell. And what that does is it draws a text field inside a table column and it allows for editing when the cell is double clicked. And we'll call a method for table column on that object. The last name is essentially the same format as the first name column. We'll just copy that down and we'll change the reference to last name column. Now, age, since it is strictly speaking in our data model, not a text or a string field, we're going to have to do something just a little different with this one. We still provide the text field table cell to allow us to do the editing, but we also have to provide a converter in order to convert that from the string that's entered into that text field in the third table column back to an integer that we're going to use for storing in our field in our data model. And here, as an argument to the for table column method, we're going to instantiate a new integer string converter. And that will convert back from the string to the integer once we're done editing in the age field column. So let's run the program and see what additional functionality that provides. So here we have the table with the three columns and the five records that we added. When we double click now on a cell in the first name column, a text field that's drawn for us and it allows us to make changes to the data that's in that cell. So let's change that to, I don't know, uh, Peter and hit enter. You'll see now it's not Bugs Bunny anymore, but Peter Bunny. 
we can do the same thing to the last name column. And we'll change Bugs Bunny, AKA Peter Rabbit's age now to seven. But what we've done here is simply change the data in the visual representation on the screen. It has not actually updated the data in our person data model, the observable list of person objects that we have that serves as the data model for our table view. And you can see if we change the sorting order here, at some point the original values come back and our changes that we made to the elements in those three columns just disappear. So what we have to do now for each column in our table view is we have to set an event handler for the on edit commit event for the column. So we'll start with first name and we'll do a set on edit commit and what I'm going to do just to have everything all in one place is I'm just going to instantiate a an event handler as an anonymous class and that event handler is going to handle a cell edit event And the cell edit event handles person objects and the specific column handles a string value for the first name column. And now if we hover over the event handler we'll see we have to add the standard unimplemented method for the event handler which is the handle method. In this case the handle method handles cell edit events of type person and string. And what we'll do here is we will get the person object for the row that is currently being edited in our list view. And then we'll set the first name to the new value that was entered in the text field when we're editing it. So we'll get the row value that's given to us as part of the cell edit event passed through in our method. And then we'll use a set first name method on that person to update the new value. And the event dot again, get new value. And we have essentially the same thing for the last name column. And we'll just change the column name, make sure that everything else is okay in there. We'll get the person and we'll set the last name this time. We'll do the same for the age column, making the appropriate changes. So we'll change the reference to age column on edit commit cell edit event person in this case it's an integer for the age column we'll also change that in the handle method and we'll use the set age method of the person event assigning the new value that was entered into the cell in the age column back to the value in the instance variable in our person instance. So now all should be good. We can run that and make the same changes as before. We'll change bugs to Peter. Hit enter. We use bunny to rabbit. Enter and we'll change the age from 79 to 7. And then we can move about all we want. The values are there because they have been stored in our data model, which is used to populate our list view. If you're interested, all of the code for this project can be found on GitHub, and I will leave a link to that uh, code in the description below. 
So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comments area below. Uh, I really appreciate you spending some time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video when we're going to continue exploring the table view control. In the next video, I'm going to start splitting this up. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to move the table view into its own custom control. Even with this small program, uh, things are, are a little out of hand, and this is not really the way that you would write a production program trying to cram everything into the start method. So we're going to start breaking this up and moving towards a more modular approach to our, our programming. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care and keep on coding.